My name is Chantal Migoni and I'm a specialist in public health medicine at the National Immunisation Office. This presentation focuses on talking to people who may be hesitant about COVID-19 vaccines. It's particularly focused on healthcare professionals who may have colleagues who may be hesitant about vaccination. You can see the learning objectives in this slide and in particular you learn skills to listen and engage in conversations aimed at building trust in vaccines. So first of all, we know that our immunisation programme for COVID-19 has been extremely successful in Ireland. Our uptake is 90%, which is extremely high by both European and international standards. And you can see on the right that across age groups, vaccine uptake has been very high. So this means that our proportion of uh, people who have not had COVID-19 vaccine is very low, and this includes healthcare workers. So the number of people who are hesitant about vaccination is actually low. But of course, we want to do everything we can to increase uptake in those people who are hesitant about vaccination. So what do we know about vaccine acceptance from other vaccines? Well, we know that the proportion of people who are adamantly against vaccination is actually very low. Most people accept vaccines and a small number of people will be undecided. And these are the people who are hesitant. So what do we know affects hesitancy? So why might somebody be reluctant to be vaccinated, even like healthcare professionals that we know um, are very strongly recommended to be vaccinated? Well, there's three things that affect um, hesitancy. The first is confidence in the vaccine. So confidence that the vaccine is safe and confident that it's effective, but also confidence in government and institutions. So confidence in our structures, our health services, the people who make the decisions about vaccination, the policy decisions about vaccination, and more widely confidence in the government. Also complacency. So that's complacency about the disease that's prevented by vaccination. So for example, some healthcare workers may think that they're young and they're well, so they don't need to be vaccinated because COVID won't cause serious disease in them. We know that's not the case, but that may be some complacency about the vaccine or they may say things like well you know if I'm sick I'll stay home from work so I won't spread it to other people. Then there's convenience and constraints so again we may say well what do you mean convenience and constraints everybody can get COVID-19 vaccination but if you think about it if you are perhaps a little bit unsure about vaccination and to get vaccinated you have to go to a CVC and you don't have a car and it's far away from where you work or where you live or you work shifts and when you come out of your shift, the vaccination centres are closed or you can't access an appointment with your GP. All of those constraints might mean that somebody does not access vaccination, despite the fact that it is available to them. So what can we do about vaccine hesitancy? Well, you can see here all the different factors that affect a person's decision about vaccination. So it's really complex. So we can't do everything as colleagues or as managers or as health healthcare professionals. However, what we can do is have a skilled conversation with somebody about vaccination because we are the most trusted sources of information about vaccines and a conversation with somebody, a trusted healthcare professional has been shown to make a difference in somebody's acceptance of vaccination. So that's really encouraging and really important to know. And a skilled conversation is really important. It's not enough just to give data and statistics because all of us, whether we work as a healthcare professional, a healthcare worker, or whether we're a member of the public, none of us make decisions about vaccination necessarily in a rational way. Our decision making is complex about vaccines. So, for example, we're strongly influenced by what we think others around us are doing lived experience matters and we prefer anecdotes and stories to data and evidence and so for that reason um, vaccination isn't necessarily just a rational decision even if we are in the healthcare professions and what we want to do in our conversations with somebody who's undecided about vaccination is to build trust in COVID-19 vaccines and there's two elements of this one is competence but the other is caring so competence is important. So knowing the facts, being competent and knowledgeable about the vaccines, knowing about their effectiveness, their safety, about national decision makers, such as the National Immunization Advisory Committee, that's all really important. But remember, we're not necessarily using the, the data and analytical part of our brains to make decisions about vaccination. So caring is also really important. How, what we say, but also how we interact with that person. Um, strongly influences vaccine acceptance. So what works and what doesn't work? 
Well, the World Health Organization uh, emphasizes that in order to build trust in vaccines, we should be having conversations which are based on motivational interviewing, addressing a person's specific concerns, um, and using skills um, to communicate respectfully uh, with somebody about vaccination. The other thing that works, which we don't focus on so much in this presentation, is the practical bits, making access to vaccination convenient, so um, making it easy for people to get vaccinated, and also reminders, reminding people about vaccines. They also work, but for this presentation, we'll really focus on the communication. So what doesn't help? Well, bombarding people with data and research and evidence um, doesn't help, and in fact, there is some evidence that if somebody is hesitant about vaccination, bombarding them with data and evidence may actually make them less likely to be vaccinated, which is a little bit counterintuitive, but just to remember that. Also, entering into prolonged debates about vaccination doesn't work. And the other one to be aware of is to debunking myths that are circulating on social media if the person hasn't specifically brought this up as a concern is not advised because it may actually help to propagate the myth. So, if you start saying, oh, I don't know if you've heard X on social media, but it isn't true. If that person hasn't raised that specific concern, um, then don't raise it. But we'll talk about this again later. So if you're talking to somebody who hasn't been vaccinated, you can imagine a colleague of yours that you know hasn't been vaccinated. The first thing is, where are they on the vaccine acceptance continuum? So find, try and establish, are they in the red, somebody who totally doesn't trust vaccine and is 100% sure that they're not going to get a COVID-19 vaccine? Or are they much more commonly one of those people who is undecided? So they may say things like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna get it. I'm not sure it's safe or I'm gonna put it off. I'm not sure, I have my doubts. Then they're really the ones that, um, th that we can influence. So first steps, find out where somebody is on the vaccine acceptance continuum. And if you've est established that somebody is in that undecided um, part of the spectrum, then what you want to do is use motivational interviewing techniques. So what is motivational interviewing? Well, motivational interviewing is used for loads of other um, types of interaction. So for example, in smoking cessation or in people who have addiction, but really it's a method of interacting with people, which is aimed at exploring somebody's reasons for hesitancy and changing their attitudes and behavior. And what a lot of people say is when they see the slide is they say, well, I don't have time to go into this level of detail with people. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really busy and I just don't have time to spend a long time with somebody having these types of conversation. But actually, just because you're using motivational interviewing techniques doesn't mean that it takes time. It takes just as much time to have a skilled conversation with someone as to have a different kind of conversation. In actual fact, different kinds of conversations can take longer because they can develop into debates, etc. So what are the principles of motivational interviewing? Well, first of all, is asking open-ended questions. So for example, if somebody says, I'm worried about getting the vaccine, I'm not sure if it's safe, ask them, well, what are, what are you worried about in particular, or what are your concerns about the vaccine? The second one is, the second one is to reflect, reflect and respond. So reflect what they've said. So if they say, well, I'm afraid that the vaccine isn't safe, um, you can say something like, I understand that you want to make the best choice for you, but you're saying that you are worried about the vaccine and whether it's safe. Number three, affirm strengths and validate their concerns. So this doesn't mean that you agree with what they're saying, but what it does is it affirms the, their strengths, what they're doing right, and you validate their concerns. So you validate that they may be worried about the vaccine. So for example, if somebody says, well, I've read online that the vaccine can interact with your DNA, you can say, well, it's great that you're thinking about vaccines because the fact that they're looking for information means that they're thinking about vaccines. And then you say, and I know that it can be worrying when you read things like that online. And that's validating their concern, validating the fact that they've read something that makes them worried. You then ask, provide and verify. So first of all, you ask, what do they already know about COVID-19 vaccines? What have they heard about the vaccines? And that's both good and bad. What have you heard about COVID-19 vaccines? Have you heard anything about why they're, you know, why people are getting them or why they're not getting them? Asking what their current understanding is. Then provide them with information. So for example, based on what you've just told me, could I give you some information about, um, about the vaccine and about your concerns that you've raised in relation to the vaccine? And then verify um, based on your conversation of, of their understanding. So um, 
just given what we've what we've had a chat about or what we've discussed how how do you view the vaccine now or what do you think of the vaccine now then summarize and describe the action so um from our conversation you've uh, you've found out a little bit more information and you've told me that you're now happy to go ahead and get vaccinated and then describe the action can i arrange an appointment with our doctor pharmacist occupational health or if somebody has said that they still want to think about it you could say okay well after our conversation you've decided that you want to look at a little bit more information can i give you some um some information from the hc national immunization office to read etc so let's go into this into a little bit more detail um, this is a sample conversation you can imagine anya is the director of nursing in a residential care facility and when she's having a um, conversation with deirdre who's a healthcare assistant about infection prevention and control deirdre mentions that she hasn't been vaccinated and deirdre says to anya well i haven't had the vaccine because i'm not really sure that it's safe so from that conversation Anya has established that Deirdre is hesitant or undecided about vaccination. She said, I'm not sure that it's safe. So she's definitely not totally against vaccination, but she's also definitely not accepting it totally at the moment either. So she's going to proceed with an motivational interviewing style. So Deirdre has said, I'm not sure that it's safe. So Anya says, can I ask you what you're worried about in particular? So there she is asking an open question. Deirdre says, well, I've read online that COVID-19 vaccines can cause infertility. So Anya says, it's good that you're thinking about vaccination. So she's affirming the strengths. And then she says, it can be worrying when you read things like that online. I know there's a lot of information online that can make you worry. She's validating Deirdre's concern. Then she asks her, can I check with you what you know about COVID-19 vaccines? And she asks her, can I check with you what you've heard about the vaccine and infertility? And just be aware here not to bring up new concerns as we've said before you are going to focus specifically on Deirdre's concern about infertility so Deirdre says I've heard you might not be able to get pregnant after I know it's important not to get or spread COVID-19 so Anya reflects on what Deirdre has said so she says okay so you know that the vaccine is important to protect you and others the people that we're working with in our residents but you're worried because you've read that the vaccine might affect fertility and that's why you haven't had the vaccine so far. So reflecting what Deirdre has said to her. She then asks what Deirdre already knows about the vaccine. So can I ask you what you know about the COVID-19 vaccine? Um, can I ask you what you've, what you've read about it or what other people have said? So that means you're asking what her current understanding of the vaccine is and then provide information. Can I give you some information about the vaccine and about fertility? Providing um, Deirdre with information about the vaccine that addresses her concerns. Just a tip here, stress the positives about the vaccine, the fact that the vaccines, what they're designed to do, which is to you know, protect her, protect her family, protect the residents. Another tip is to share your experience if you're somebody that uh, that Deirdre can uh, relate to so for example if you're, if you're the same age as Deirdre that would be very important um, to share your experience because they can be very powerful so for example saying something like well you know I also did research before I got the vaccine like I read up about it and I was happy to get it so I've had the COVID-19 vaccine for example but remember it should be somebody to whom you can relate to to whom the person can relate to and recommend the vaccine. I recommend that you have the vaccine. So the next thing is to verify, um, verify uh, what you've talked about. So now that we've talked about this, can I check how you view things now? So verify their understanding. And then summarize and describe the action. So, um, so from our conversation, um, you've told me that you're, you're you're thinking still about the vaccine that you'd like to read up a little bit more about it so i can give you some more information to read about the vaccines from the hse um, website and here is the leaflet or um, now that we've had a, a, a discussion i understand that you're happy to go ahead and get the vaccine so i can help you to make an appointment etc and as a tip there don't forget to give practical advice about how to get vaccinated so you know there's a there's a cvc down the road or the pharmacy down the road does the vaccines and you can make an appointment there um or you know gpx and um, does the vaccines etc 
So what about those people who are completely against vaccination? How do we proceed with them? And this can be really frustrating and it can it can cause um, a lot of frustration and take up a lot of time. So this is a little bit different because this is somebody who is adamant that they do not want vaccination. So usually they'll say something like, I'm sure that I don't want to be vaccinated. I don't believe in vaccines. I think, you know, that all vaccines are dangerous or whatever. The first thing is be non-judgmental. Um, you can use a similar approach. So I can see that you feel strongly about this and you can affirm strengths without agreeing with them, obviously, but say something that, and you want to do the best for your health. Ask permission to discuss. Would it be okay with you to talk about vaccination against COVID-19? If they say no, then just let them know um, that there's space for them to come back for future discussions. If you ever do want to talk to me about it, you're very welcome to talk to me about it. I'm very happy to talk to you about it. Um, if they do agree to talk to you about it, again, use a similar approach to the last time. But if, if there, it's entering into a debate or an argument, just don't continue with that because it's unproductive. So instead, you can just end the conversation by saying something like, I can see that you feel strongly about this. And again, um, reiterating that if they ever want to come back and talk about vaccination, that they're very welcome. The goal is here to maintain the relationship with the person so that the door remains open, your relationship is maintained, and they can come back and talk to you about vaccination in the future if they want to. So now that we've talked about the communication skills, I'm just going to go in a little bit about some of the que tricky questions maybe that you might be asked about COVID-19 vaccines. And we've already mentioned some of these. So um, the first thing is, do COVID-19 vaccines affect our DNA in any way? And the answer is no, they don't. For the mRNA vaccines, which are the vaccines that people are receiving now, mRNA never enters the nucleus of the cells, which is where our DNA, our genetic material is kept. It doesn't interact with our own DNA and the cells break down and gets rid of the mRNA soon after it's finished using the instructions. And similarly, the other vaccines that we use as well do not in any way interact with our DNA. Another one that um, people may be concerned about is do COVID-19 vaccines have any effect on fertility? And the answer is no. COVID-19 vaccines, as we've described already, do not interact with your own DNA in any way, which is our genetic material. So there is no biologically plausible reason why the vaccine could affect fertility in any way. And animal studies do not show any harmful effects on fertility. The other really important thing is that COVID-19 vaccines are the most closely monitored product in the world. They're really closely monitored. More than 5 billion COVID-19 vaccines have been given around the world and there have been no concerns about fertility in women or in men. Another question is, well, why do the recommendations about vaccines change all the time? Well, since the COVID-19 vaccination be program began in last December, billions of people around the world have received a COVID-19 vaccine and there's more and more research into the vaccines going on. They're also closely monitored by regulatory bodies like the European Medicines Agency. As I said, they're the most closely monitored product out there. Um, and this means that we're learning more about the vaccines all the time. And our national expert group, the National Immunization Advisory Committee, reviews the latest available evidence on an ongoing basis. And they make changes to the recommendations to make sure that we get the greatest benefit from the vaccines as safely as possible. Another question is, do COVID-19 vaccines contain cells of human embryonic origin? And the answer is no. None of the COVID-19 vaccines contain any cells of human embryonic origin. So in summary, most people who are undecided or hesitant about vaccination are just that. They are undecided. It doesn't mean that they've made a definite decision that they're not going to get a COVID-19 vaccine. The proportion of people who are adamant that they do not want to be vaccinated is very small indeed. Healthcare professionals, trusted healthcare professionals, are the most trusted sources of information on health um, and on vaccines. And a skilled communication by a trusted healthcare professional about vaccines really matters. And it can make the difference um, in somebody accepting a COVID-19 vaccine or not. You can see here some links to more resources from the World Health Organization. And please also see immunization.ie, which has a whole um, range of, of resources to support you. Um, information about vaccines. We have frequently asked questions about vaccination. Um, lots more resources for you um, on immunization.ie as well. And finally, for those of you who are interested, there's some references there as well in relation to communication about vaccines. Thank you.